what an incredible night we witnessed last night, an incredible election night uh, from start to finish really. As soon as those exit polls came in, there was shock um, and the shock didn't really subside throughout the night and, and there were more shocks on both sides, on all sides really. Um, big people losing their seats um, and yeah, just a, a bad night for the Tories, a good night for Labour but still not a great night, they didn't win. Um, I'm going to be discussing ultimately why I think Theresa May lost her majority. I think it's three reasons, um, specifically why she lost her majority. What this means uh, for the future, what this means for Brexit, um, and also whether I think Theresa May should stay, go, UKIP, SNP, etc. Just giving you a bit of analysis on my thoughts for the 25th, 2017 even general election. And it might not be the only one of the year. We could yet get another referendum by the end of the year, probably October time, uh, if they decide not to govern on a minority stroke majority with the DUP, which will be a very, very slender majority. Now, that is what we're heading for at the moment. It looks like Theresa May is for now staying on um, and will form a coalition with the DUP, uh, obviously the Unionist Party in Northern Ireland. They had 10 seats, very good night for them last night. Um, Sinn Féin had an okay night as well. I think they got seven seats. Um, and yeah, so Sinn Féin don't actually sit their seats, so it means that the majority does go, uh, or, or the, the seats required for a majority does kind of go down. My predictions were very wrong, I will admit that. Uh, I predicted, like many people, a big, big conservative majority. It didn't transpire. It did predict losses for the SNP. Granted, not as many as they lost. Liberal Democrats had a better night than I thought. Plaid Cumbria had a better night than I thought. The Green Party had a very similar night to what I thought. UKIP had equally a very similar night to what I thought. Only thing that was worse for UKIP was their vote share. But let's just talk about then. Uh, ultimately, it's true to say this. It's been a bad night for the Tories. It was not a good night. Um... And it wasn't a good night for Brexiteers. I'm not happy. I'm not confident. Um, and, you know, I'm really, really di disappointed. I mean, Theresa May came into strength in her hand to increase the majority, and she has failed. And there are many reasons for that. But I think there's three major reasons. Um, I think there's two reasons um, that have happened, you know, in the election, that if we wouldn't have seen them happen, uh, would have changed the result. And I also think there's another... Uh, reason for it as well, and we'll, we'll go through it. I think the one of the big things um, is the fact that the youth vote turned out in mass to vote for Jeremy Corbyn last night. There's talk of 72% voter turnout for 18 to 24 year olds. That's up from about 41% in 2015. That is huge, and uh, about 70% of 16 to 22 year olds at uh, 18 to 24 year olds sorry vote or would say they were going to vote labor and no doubt they did that has meant that marginal seats that the tories thought they had target seats have gone uh, comfortably to the labor party and where universities are due to the free tuition pledge that Jeremy Corbyn and his party made, it meant that majorities were, uh, you know, increased there if Labour had them, and if they didn't, they were able to win some. London certainly came through um, for Labour as well. I think, again, a lot of that was du due to the youth vote. Um, and, I mean, simply, it's off the premise of Labour buying the youth's vote. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real with you here. Um, I think the, the youth, 18 to 24 year olds, stereotypically ideologically driven um, I think it just goes to show uh, what happens when you put people through you know 12 odd years of left wing uh, education um, you know during high school you're never ever whenever socialism spoke about it spoke about in a positive light uh, and not that it's failed multiply and no surprise really that they they've come out uh, ideologically driven uh, as socialists without the premise without the knowledge that the socialism has failed hell perhaps they do know um, and yeah they've been convinced with free stuff free tuition 
um, which doesn't help. I mean, it, it's not worked in Scotland in, in reducing the, the divide uh, in, in people going to university. At the end of the day, university should be for the best people. It should not be for everyone. And the way the, the, the system is at the moment, you know, tuition fees are there and you do get them. Um, but you don't have to start paying back your tuition fee uh, until you earn a certain amount of money. And if you don't earn a certain amount of money, you may never, ever have to pay back your tuition fee. And when you do earn a certain amount of money, it's not, you know, a substantial amount um, of money coming from your salary. So I think the system works very well. Um, and I think it's in many ways selfish um, from the, well, okay, maybe not selfish, but for the Labour Party, they certainly have bought. They have certainly bought the youth vote, and they've promised th free stuff. And it seems like eighteen to twenty-four year olds seem to have not grasped the concept yet that nothing is free in life. And although yes, they may be getting these free stuff at this age, but once they get a job and they have a house and they have a kid, um, you know, in in ten years or so time, they'll start to realise oh, nothing is free, now we've got to pay, and now, you know, the country's got to pick up uh, the pieces. Now, luckily, I think we'll avoid a Jeremy Corbyn um, government and a Jeremy Corbyn administration pushing through his agenda, which I think is a good thing. But the fact that the youth have been uh, manipulated so easily um, is very, very worrying, in my opinion. Um, and ultimately, I think a lot of it as well is the fact that 18 to 24 year olds weren't old enough really to understand unless they've looked in depth at you know the IRA um, as I have they they don't necessarily understand just how brutal and vicious uh, and murderous uh, the IRA were and how Corbyn's links um, and in many many people regard it as support outright support for the IRA, um, you know, hasn't really been a big thing with the youth because they simply don't know the, the the sheer horrific nature of the IRA, you know, as much as, as perhaps people a hell of a lot older. The same with the Falklands War. Again, young people perhaps don't know a lot about the Falklands War. Corbyn called it a Tory plot. Uh, you know, it is, it is what it is at the end of the day. As I say, Labour... Um, has been able to manipulate with a Marxist kind of approach the young vote with free stuff and free tuition. Unfortunately, uh, you know, what they will learn later on in life is nothing is free in <clears throat> life. But luckily, I don't think the Corbyn administration will be going through this election, at least. So that's what I think's a big thing. Look, I said, if, if youth turn out in big numbers, we're in trouble. And it, it proved to be the case. I did not expect a 72 monster turnout. I expected over 50%. In fact, that's what I predicted. I got that right, but I did not expect 72%. That is insane. Um, you know, I suppose you have to, in some respects, give credit to the youth, although I think they've been manipulated and I think their vote, vote has been bought. They did get off their ass. They did finally show that they give a shit. So I suppose, um, in some respects, we should praise them. But I don't think it's complete blame on young people and the 18 to 24 year olds as to what happened in this election. I think another massive factor, and I think the second big factor is the fact that the UKIP vote, uh, UKIP vote dissolved, but one third of the UKIP vote went to the Labour Party. And I simply do not understand that. And uh, UKIP is out there have to hang their head in shame if they voted for anybody other than the Tory party last night because they have jeopardised Brexit in doing so. One third um, voting for Labour to me is absolutely insane. Again, convinced with free stuff. I understand a lot of UKIP supporters came originally from Labour. There were Labour UKIP switches. That was a thing. But at the end of the day, surely as a, as a UKIPer, your main things are Brexit, immigration reform, tackling terrorism. All three of which Corbyn has a bad record on um, and has, well, not a bad record on, uh, well, terrorist uh, tackling he does, uh, Brexit and immigration he doesn't. But he has said that, you know, from what he's been saying, who knows where he is for Brexit, who knows um, 
you know, where he stands on that. And, and as for immigration, he's, he's said he doesn't want to put a number on it. So I think it's absolutely insane that they have voted for the Labour Party. And ultimately, they are traitors. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there right now. Outright traitors. They really are. I can understand the UKIP vote a little bit more uh, than the uh, than the Labour vote. But I cannot for the life of me understand the Labour vote. I really, really can't. You have jeopardised Brexit. And even though Jeremy Corbyn has not got in, you have jeopardised Brexit by removing Theresa May's majority um, in the House of Commons and meaning that the Brexit that we get now will certainly not be the Brexit that the British people voted for on, I was about to say June the 8th, but that wasn't the date, uh, June 23rd, June 24th, I can't remember what day it was. Um, so they have to take big blame. And I think if you, if the youth didn't turn out and they turned out the way they did in, uh, 2015, 2015, sorry, um, then I think we'd have seen a massive majority for the Conservatives. And I think if the Labour vote, if, if the UKIP vote, um, would have gone, you know, to, you know, even a, even a quarter. So with every five votes, you know, every 10 UKIP voters from 2015, if two of them stayed with UKIP, uh, you know, two went to Labour and six went to the Tories, I think that would have been, uh, you know, more than fun. They'd have probably still uh, got a majority. So they are the two big things on election night that cost the Tories. Um, some out of their control, others not out of the control. I think the big thing, though, is that Theresa May's campaign and manifesto was a disaster. Whether we're talking about dementia tax, whether we're talking about um, fox hunting, it was not necessary. There was no, no requirement for it. It was a poor, poor campaign. She didn't step up on terrorism until right towards the end. Uh, she flip-flopped on issues. She came across as, as, as relatively weak, let's be honest here. It was a poor campaign, probably one of the worst campaigns that we've seen the Conservatives run. You can't just blame Theresa May, but of course she was a leader and it was her campaign, so she has to take a lot of the blame, but the people behind the scenes have to take big blame for that as well. It was a poor, poor campaign. Um, she didn't do a debate, which looked like a mistake. I mean, I understand why she didn't. It was a terrible debate, and they were just shouting at each other, but she should have done uh, the debate. And I think there was a lot of complacency with the Tories, um, and I think they they ended up paying for that. I think for me now, uh, Theresa May's position is, is untenable. She has to resign. I understand in many respects why she hasn't instantly resigned, and why we may get a week or so of stability, but her position is simply untenable, uh, untenable, um, and she has to go. Um, and we have to get a new Tory leader and election called for uh, later on this year, probably October time, which probably miss, mean I will miss out on voting again. But um, yeah, uh, and yeah, no, I think that's what's going to happen, whether it be Boris Johnson or David Davis or hell. If, if Ruth Davison was an MP, I think she'd be in with a big shout. Amber Rudd, I've heard, spoke about. Um, Rudd, I don't think, is a good choice. Um, I like Boris, but is he one to unify the party? Will he have a better showing? I think he'd do a better showing, yes. Uh, I think David Davis would be the smart choice for the Conservative Party. Uh, you know, an, a, a, a logical head, a calm head, a Brexiteer, that's the important thing. The Conservative Party made a mistake. They they should have had a Brexiteer as MP in this election, and they'd have won it. It was a big mistake choosing a Remainer. And although, yes, she's converted to Brexit, apparently, it's simply not paid off. David Davis, though, would be the Brexiteer. Uh, a calm head um, would, would I think, win back some of those seats that, that the Conservative Party lost this election. Um, but it's not been a good night for the Tories. It really, really hasn't. And um, it seems like the British public are OK with having a terrorist sympathiser uh, near to number 10. And that worries the, the hell out of me. Um, but there you go. Uh, the SNP bad night. That's one silver lining for Tory voters. And a very good night in Scotland for the Tories. I think 13 odd gains or 11 gains in, in uh, uh, Scotland for for the Tories, Ruth Davidson ran an incredible campaign there. What an incredible campaign that was. And the SNP have just fell off the face of the earth. Quite clearly, Scotland does not want an independence referendum number two. And I think that's almost dead in the water now. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon, 
is trying to spin it into saying that they are still the biggest party, but it's a bad night for SNP, and uh, we'll have to wait and see what this means for uh, Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister of Scotland. Uh, of course, Angus Robertson has lost his seat, the leader of the SNP, so we expect him to resign. Uh, well, I mean, he, he'll go. Um, I mean, that's, that's just a, an outright obvious one, I suppose. And more importantly, I suppose you could argue, Alex Salmond has lost his seat as well. A lot of people cheery about that last night. Other big casualties seat-wise, there was worry at, t uh, for, at one point that Amber Rudd was going to lose her seat. She did manage to narrowly hold on to it. Tim Farron narrowly held on to his seat as well. Again, there was worries within the Lib Dem camps early on in the night that he might lose his seat too. Uh, but a big loss for the Liberal Democrats has to be the loss of um, Nick Clegg, of course, was Deputy Prime Minister in the Coalition um, with uh, the Conservative Party in 2010, sorry, um, famously went back on his free tuition fee pledge and it really cost him and his party. And it looks like he is out of politics. Massive result there. I mean, I did call that before the election, but it's still a seismic shock. I think Alex Salmon was probably the biggest shock of the night. Um, and even in some respects, Ipswich, um, the guy who writ um, the Conservative Manifesto as part of the Tory Manifesto, Ben uh, Grimmer uh, lost his seat in Ipswich to the Labour Party. Massive loss there. I mean, they had a big majority. And it went Canterbury, went uh, away from the Tories. A massive result there for Labour. It, one that you just cannot explain. Peterborough, who had a pro-Brexit MP, voted uh, for Brexit in the masses, in the majority, 60-odd percent in the EU referendum. UKIP didn't stand to aid that pro-Brexiteer. And they lost their seat. It just doesn't make sense, a lot of it. Um, so, I mean, try and work that one out. Mad results, really, across the board. Liberal Democrats, in the end, a good night. Um, some gains uh, for them. The Green Party all but lost pretty much everything, bar their solitary seat, I believe, Caroline Lucas, held on to that. But their vote share massively gone down. It's, like it's almost gone to uh, the uh, Labour Party. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, nobody, I think, really, apart from possibly uh, Labour, can come out with a head held high from this, although Labour's still the second biggest party in the country. And I think that just goes to show with, I saw a tweet earlier that said, it's one of the worst Conservative campaigns we've ever seen, and still, Labour are the second biggest party. Labour can try and spin this into them winning the election, but they are about 50 or 40-odd seats behind. I think it might actually be 50 seats behind uh, the Conservative Party. So they are still a way off from forming a government, thank God, um, and, and being the overall uh, majority or having the overall majority in the House of Commons. What does this mean for Corbyn? He'll most likely stay, especially if a uh, another... Uh, election is called later on in the year um, and ultimately anybody up but Theresa May, David Davis, um, Boris Johnson, uh, you know a Brexiteer as an MP would have won that election in a landslide last night. May has to go. What does it mean for UKIP? Well Paul Nuttall has resigned as leader. Talk about Nigel Farage coming in to replace him. He's in fact at the moment the bookie's favourite to replace uh, Paul Nuttall as the leader of UKIP, he has said he may come back to um, the party uh, after election results last night. As he said, Brexit is under threat. Uh, Plaid Cymru had a decent night, although I thought they'd lose six. They did OK. In the end, at the moment, Tim Farron seems like he is not going to be resigning. A mixed bag for the Liberal Democrats. Definitely did well in Scotland, did well, quite well in London. Um, but did lose uh, elsewhere. So a bit of a random night, really. Liberty Democrats, uh, no on them. Sir Vince Cable did get uh, elected for the Liberal Democrats. Some people are talking about him, possibly, as the next leader of uh, the Liberal Democrats. Norman, Norman Lamb, another one who is uh, being talked about as possibly next leader of the Liberal Democrats. But I don't think that uh, Tim Farron will go. So ultimately, in an election that Theresa May wanted to increase her mandate and, you know, after this election, have a strong and stable government. Well, it is quite the opposite. The country is in chaos. We currently have a hung parliament. We might be able to sneak a majority, or the Conservatives might be able to sneak a majority with a coalition with the DUP. 
but Brexit is in jeopardy. The country is in chaos. This election that Theresa May called has not paid off. Surely it's time for Theresa May to leave her position. What a night. What an election. And look, folks, it might not even be the last election of this year. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.